presidents have this impossible problem, which is that they are expected to do way more than their formal constitutional powers allow them to do. And so a way in which they bridge that gap is by developing these kinds of rituals and these kinds of performances that present themselves as larger than life. And when you think about the kinds of challenges associated with, for instance, climate change, what you get when you put policy reforms before Congress is a set of parochial, short-sighted, short-term solutions that are meant to attend to the local interests of each constituent back home. I mean, the topic is one where presidents try to secure the trust uh, and the legitimacy that the public can confer. He's trying to convince the American public that he stands at the center of the political universe and that all eyes are justifiably on him and that we should look to him for general guidance about uh, what we ought to be doing, about what, um, uh, what kinds of not just policies we should be pursuing, but what kinds of commitments we should be um, standing by. The argument for a stronger presidency is not an argument where you reason from your favorite president or from your least favorite president. That's not the work of institutional reform. The argument for a stronger presidency is not that the presidents always have it right, but rather they can offer a kind of perspective that we need in shaping the agenda. They get to put before Congress proposals for how we solve problems. Congress can vote them down, they're free to do so, but the president lacks any formal agenda-setting power under the Constitution. It's, it's acquired some legislatively over time, but this would allow presidents to formally introduce and, and command a vote within Congress on, on their proposals.